Hi, this is Moki, and today I'm going to be reviewing Ronnie Patel in Full Effect by Sonia Patel. I got this book from Brie Hill, who had been tweeting about it and who later reviewed it, and I found her kind of conversation about it really interesting. I had had this sort of split hesitation slash curiosity about the book based on its summary, because on the one hand it's about an Indian American girl, um, and, and on the other hand the summary just didn't quite grab me, but based on her, on Brie Hill's tweets and reviews, I was curious about it. Um, so I'm really thankful for her to, for sending me the book. So thank you, Brie. I've linked to her review below, which is really, really great. On to the book. Uh, Ronnie Patel in Full Effects follows the story of Ronnie Patel, an Indian American teenager who lives in Hawaii with her mom. Ronnie has just caught her dad having an affair with a younger woman, and this affair kind of serves as a catalysis point for basically a pretty intense year for Ronnie, who shaves her head, takes on rapping, and gets involved with some boys. My feeling about this book is that it has a number of good ideas, but the execution is weak. Um, so for example, one of the things that I really, really loved about it in terms of ideas is combining um, Rania's Indian heritage with her current Hawaiian settings. I think both of these aspects to her character and her history are really interesting because they're not things that you'd see that much of separately and definitely not that much of together. And I think there's a lot of very specific things that are taken from both of these aspects of her life that are really compelling. The book wants to talk a lot about marriage and womanhood in Indian families and then also talk about environmental concerns and drug abuse in Hawaii. And I think that Patel has done a really good job of bringing these different parts of Rani's life uh, to the book without making them feel completely separate. She uses a a lot of the Gujarati language and Hawaiian slang uh, throughout the book, just in Rani's daily conversation. And in theory, this is a really great way for the reader to get immersed in Ronnie's life, just to have her language, have her natural vocabulary be a part of the story, showing the different worlds that she's inhabiting, and even kind of getting at some of the code switching that she's engaging in, just by factor of being an Indian American girl in a place where there aren't that many Indian people around her. But my issue, and this might be really nitpicky, is that the the book doesn't directly translate these the slang or the different um, parts of her conversations with her family um, within the text. There's actually a separate within the story itself. There's actually a separate glossary that is at the end of the book where all of these things are defined. And I'm personally one of those people that I don't like flipping back and forth in books. I if you want me to read what the thing is supposed to mean, you got to put it in footnotes or you got to put it in parentheses. And so I think that was what, kind of one of those decisions that kind of weakened an otherwise really interesting choice in the book. And I think the, the one of the issues that I had the most constant trouble with was the dialogue. It just felt really stilted. Like it almost felt... It almost felt like Ronnie's voice was performative, like a teenager playing bombastic. And and to some extent that is what she's, what's happening, like she is going through a lot of trouble, she's trying to engage with the people around her, so she's almost putting on a personality of being like easygoing and being able to kind of like, and playing it confident, so I don't think that that's necessarily inconsistent. I think that's what's hard is that there's something about her dialogue or even the fact that, you know, the book is told from a first person narrative point of view that lacks like something vulnerable about it, which is weird because there are definitely things that are talked about that are very much built on vulnerability. Like she goes into a lot of deep issues and trauma, but there's something about her voice that for me just had a disconnect as a reader. And I, I feel bad because I don't have like a specific idea of how to phrase that, but it's just something for me that felt very distant from her. Holy shit, my cat has just been sitting there just like staring. Hey, look who moved over there. Um, so my favorite part of the book by far was Ronnie's relationship with her mother. Uh, and I think it really highlights a tension that is very gender specific when you're talking about first generation American kids versus their parents. I mean, the culture clash that happens when you're a first generation American kid is like, you know, that's gonna happen no matter what gender you are, but I think there's a very specific thing that happens when you're a girl and you're growing up and you're comparing the culture you're growing up in to the one that your parents may have come from. And especially if they're coming from one that's more conservative, 
with regards to women's roles, it can be really weird to kind of navigate these differences. Ronnie's mother has definitely been raised in a very conservative family setup. Um, she was in an arranged marriage, has really sacrificed everything for her husband, and her husband does not give a shit about her. I mean, not only does he cheat on her, but he... Oh my god, he decides that he is going to move his... He's going to move back into the house, and he's gonna move his new girlfriend in with him. Like, that's his idea of a new family. And there's uh, so many other aspects to this as well. I mean, they've moved to Hawaii where there's not the same Indian American community that they had back where they were living on the East Coast. Um, so like Ronnie and her mother are lacking the same support system that they might have had at that time. It's really this underlying story of Ronnie's mother having to un overcome this trauma that is made even worse because she's separated from people that she, is, she can be really close to, that she really connects to on this fundamental level of having come from the same place. And I really wish that the book had explored this more because, like I said, this was the most interesting part for me. My family is relatively liberal, I think, by, you know, Indian standards and with regards to women's roles for sure. I mean, my grandmother went off to England on her own to study at Oxford. My parents didn't have an arranged marriage. My paternal grandparents didn't have an arranged marriage. So there's a lot of ways in which I think my family dynamic is not the stereotype that a lot of people would imagine, especially if you're basing it off of reading this book. Um, but even still, I know that my parents' views on dating and marriage are much more conservative compared to my own. I think this was a this was a part of the book that like I really connected to because I think that the way that Ronnie's mother views marriage isn't like even for all of its differences is more in line. It, it has a lot in common with my parents than you know. While I think Ronnie and I are more similar to each other, even if I would not have made many of the choices that Ronnie makes with regards to relationships. And Ronnie writes a lot of raps and poems that kind of get at this tension between like the culture that her parents come from and the culture that she is growing up in. And I think it's so fascinating and I just wish that her mother had been given a more prominent role in the book so that the thread of this tension could have been even more central and maybe resolved in a more satisfying way. So I do have more to say about this book. But this, I have to issue two warnings first. Um, a, there's going to be spoilers in this. I don't, I don't know if I consider them major spoilers. Just, I mean, they are major parts of the book. But I just don't feel like this is one of those books where like so much happens that I'm like giving away some major twist. Um, but I am revealing details of the plot that you don't know within the first like two or three chapters. The other thing is that these spoilers are going to involve rape, abuse, and incest. So I just want to issue that warning up front um, and just in general for if you are looking at this book and considering it um, and these are sensitive topics for you, just take that in mind. So if you think you'd want to stop watching now, um, my general summation of the book is this. Ronnie is a unique character in a lot of ways. I think if you're looking to diversify your YA reading, there's a lot of value to her story and the different cultures that she's coming from. But this book was a frustrating read. And as I talked about with Brie, this was a book where like, I didn't want to put it down, but not in that good way where it's like, I need to know what happens, but really more of like a, if I put this down, I'm not going to pick this book up again. And I managed to, but it was, it was a real effort for me to do that. Honestly, if it hadn't been for the storyline about Rodney's mother and the fact that I had been sent this book, I don't know if that I would have been able to finish it. I probably would have DNF'd it. Now on to the both triggery and spoilery parts of this book. So one of the things that I think is pretty clear early on in this book is that it is very boy obsessed. Ronnie is basically either worrying about her parents' marriage or thinking about boys. Like she is a two track mind, three track if you include a rap, but even that seems to take kind of like a weird secondary place to these main issues. These guys that Ronnie is interested in, there's something that's like just either majorly off or slightly off about them that makes them potentially not great guys for her to pursue. So the first guy is Mark, who is like in his 20s and interested in a teenage girl, one of those things that's like, ugh. And then the other love interest is Pono, who is more appropriate age-wise, but is in a relationship with somebody else. So there's just this complication throughout the whole thing that's just like mildly messy. I think by the middle of the book though, my feelings about the inappropriateness of the guy started to shift. Um, 
not in the fact that not like the idea that I would find them appropriate like they're still completely inappropriate I started wondering if this supposed to is supposed to be deliberate and this is because we find out that Ronnie was raped by her father when she was younger and she has a number of issues with her relationships with him that maybe carry out to her relationships with men in general and Sonia Patel includes an author's note at the end to discuss this in the some in the context of her work as a psychiatrist and I think when I got to the end of this book that really helped for me to like be like okay yes this is the point and, and that author's note really goes a long way to explain just other parts of the book that are very frustrating um such as Mark Ronnie repeatedly returning to Mark who at first is just a shitty boyfriend because he's cheating on her and then later becomes a total shithead because he rapes her and the author's note does talk about how victims of rape and abuse might return to someone who has done that to them um and, and you know just engaging in decisions that might always not always seem healthy and I think I think she was really trying to illustrate uh, Ronnie not as someone who we should be emulating or glorifying, but as someone who's going through different mindsets that take her from good choices to bad choices to good again. And so I think she was really trying to come up with a realistic portrayal of someone as um, both victim and as someone who was developing her own agency. But like I said, like I think her author's note does provide a lot of good context for decisions that would have otherwise seemed frustrating, but I also feel like if you need an author's note to do that there's something that's missing from your story. I think there are times when Ronnie Patel in full effect is almost there and no matter what the weaknesses are I do feel like it's respectful of Ronnie's experiences as a victim of rape and incest. I just think this is a case where the great explanation and writing and the author's note unfortunately just didn't translate well into great fictional writing and yeah so let me if you have read this book let me know and yeah bye.